Hi, my name's Keith. I'm in the studio working on the prototype for my next module, and it's going to incorporate FM synthesis. So I went online to see what other people were doing, and I came to the conclusion that there are a lot of misconceptions around FM. In specific, the difference between linear FM and exponential FM. And I hope this video can uh, clear up some of those questions and misconceptions. So what is this FM synthesis thing anyway? FM stands for frequency modulation and it's easiest to show with an example. So say you had one oscillator at, at some audio rate, say A440. And then you had another oscillator that was uh, much slower, say an LFO, running at only say 8 to 10 hertz, so say 8 hertz. And you took the amplitude output of the modulating oscillator and you used it to vary the pitch of the main oscillator. Well, the result is vibrato, and you've done this countless times on a monosynth or on a modular. But one interesting thing you can do is you can take the frequency of the modulating wave, and instead of making it a low frequency wave, you can bump it up until it's in the audio range or very close to the fundamental oscillator that you're playing. It's easier to show these large FM effects on the ARP Odyssey. So this is the main oscillator. And this is the modulating oscillator. The modulating oscillator is in the audio range, but it's just lower in frequency than the main oscillator. And what I'll do is I'll bring the main oscillator up again, and then apply the FM effect all the way to the maximum, and then slowly bring it back down to the minimum. Well, that sounded neat, but it seemed a bit out of control. And also, the frequency of the main oscillator seemed to drift upwards when the FM effect was added. And that seemed a bit odd, because the, uh, the modulating uh, frequency was actually lower in pitch. So you think maybe the overall pitch should have gone down, or maybe stayed the same. Well, that's one thing that I can explain. Rather than draw the wave shape, I'll use this line to represent a range of frequencies, say from uh, 100 hertz down at the left, all the way to, say, 1000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. And the pitch we were playing, the fundamental pitch, was 440 hertz. And rather than think of this in terms of vibrato, where you just go up and down a few semitones, uh, in pitch. Uh, let's consider going up and down a full octave because it just makes the numbers easier. And you probably know that when you go up an octave you double the frequency. So um, if you had a pitch of 440 Hertz and you modulated it up an octave that would go up to 880 Hertz. And then on the way down if you modulated it one octave lower than 440 then it would go down to half the frequency, or 220. Now there's something interesting to note here. Uh, when you modulate up, you change the pitch by 440 hertz. But when you modulate down, you change the pitch only by 220 hertz. So the, the absolute pitch change in frequency is greater going up than coming down. Now, this is known as exponential FM, and this is traditional FM on a monosynth or, or a modular. The reason this is called exponential FM is because with an analog synth, to go up an octave, you add one volt. So to go up multiple octaves in a row, you go from one volt to two volt to three volt to four volts, even though the frequency is doubling every time you go up. And if you plotted 
voltage versus frequency, you would get an exponential curve. So that begs the question, what would happen if you modulated up and down by the same number of hertz around the fundamentals? So say 220 down and only 220 hertz up, or 100 hertz and 100 hertz. Well, that's known as linear FM synthesis. And it's hard to do with any uh, sort of accuracy on an analog synth. So usually you use a digital synth. And for that, we'll have to bring out the big guns. So you were probably wondering when a Yamaha DX synth would appear in this video. I don't have a DX7, but I do have a DX11. And I have to apologize in advance. This is the worst user interface for a synthesizer ever. So it's going to be kind of difficult to see what I'm doing. For this example, I'm going to be using algorithm one. Linear FM synthesis is usually described in the terms of algorithms and operators. And this is a pictorial of algorithm one on the DX11, and it has four operators. Now, an operator is just a sine wave oscillator, and it's usually pitched to whatever key you're pressing down, uh, sometimes an octave up or an octave down. Uh, and the lines in, in the diagram show uh, how the frequency or pitch modulation is connected between the different oscillators or the operators. So here it's showing that sine wave oscillator 4 modulates itself, so it's basically a feedback loop, and the output of sine wave oscillator 4 modulates the pitch of sine wave oscillator 3, the output of 3 modulates 2, and the output of 2 modulates 1, and the output of one is what you hear on the audio output of the synthesizer. You always only hear the audio output of the operators at the very bottom of the chain. The rest of them are internal to the synth only and they're silent for the output. Now I'm going to simplify things a bit here. I'm going to turn off uh, operator or oscillator number four and number three and this uh, turns it into basically the same example that I did with the ARP Odyssey, where I have a main oscillator that you're listening to, and another one also at the audio rate that's modulating the frequency of that main oscillator. So now we'll go into edit mode and turn off operators 3 and 4 and set up operators 1 and 2 into a simple setup with two sine waves, both at the audio rate, one modulating the other. So I'll go into edit mode and turn off the two operators. Then I have to check the waves. Okay, now I have my example set up and this is simply the fundamental, the main oscillator. It's just a sine wave. And with the data slider, I will slowly bring in the modulation of the second operator. So here we go. So what you probably noticed is uh, with this linear FM example compared to the exponential uh, example, things are much more controlled and sound much more uh, musically useful and musically harmonic. We don't lose the uh, the pitch of the main oscillator. It almost sounds uh, like, like a low pass filter effect. So now what I'll do is, uh, rather than manually moving the data slider up and down to bring in the modulation effect, I'll program an envelope, a punchy envelope, and what it'll do is it'll basically automate this uh, modulation effect so it's punchy at the beginning and then come down to a, a level kind of at the one quarter, uh, the one quarter level. So uh, let me do that and I'll show you what that sounds like. Okay, so now I've programmed in uh, a little bit of automation for the modulation effect by using an envelope, and this is what it sounds like now. So it'll be a punchy envelope that'll bring in the modulation and then pull it back. So this is starting to sound really good. This is a really respectable bass synthesizer patch, and all this is uh, is uh, it's just two sine waves and an envelope and some modulation. So this is starting to show how powerful the linear uh, FM synthesis uh, method can be. So I hope that answered some questions about FM and showed some of the techniques. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.